Hi, I'm going to do a couple quick examples of how to simplify radical expressions. I'll do, do a couple with numbers and then a couple with variables. You'll probably be asked to do problems where you have a number, coefficient, and variables inside your radical sign. But if you can handle these, you'll be able to handle those with no problem. Those are just like having two or three little problems within one problem. You know, you just can handle the number separately and the variable separately. So, let's try to do a good job understanding these, and then you'll be ready for the tougher ones. Okay, I'll do two examples with numbers first. Let's take a look at the first one, the square root of 720. Here's the fast way. The fast way would really be you knowing your perfect square factors and knowing factors of 720. Some person some people might be able to look at 720 and say, hey, that is divisible by 144. 144 times 5. And 144 is a perfect square. And so they would factor that 720, the square root of 720, into two square roots that are being multiplied together. They would put the perfect square factor in front in the first radical, and then the non-perfect square factor in the second. Okay. What that does is it allows them to take the square root of the first. Okay, so now we've got part of the 720 that we can take the square root of nicely, which is 12. And then the factor that we can't take the square root of nicely will just stay inside the radical sign. Our goal is really to get as much as possible outside that radical sign. So that's the quick way. On the other problem, the quick way would look looked like this you would know your perfect cube factors. You'd be looking for something that's a perfect cube that is a factor of 375, and it would have been 125. 125 times 3. Here's your perfect cube factor. Here's your non-perfect cube factor. Okay. Then, you'll have the ability to take the square root of 125, which is 5. The cube root of 3 is not so nice. It's going to be an irrational decimal. We leave it inside. That's the quick way. I can pretty much guarantee that as you're doing these, you'll probably come across a problem or two where you won't be able to look at that number and just quickly go, hey, I know that's divisible by blank perfect square or, you know, a certain perfect cube. So what can you do if you're not seeing that? Here's the strategy. Let's start over. What we can do is we can simply start factoring the number. Whether we're seeing a perfect square factor or not, if you can just factor the number, and then our goal will really be shooting for the prime factorization. So let's go back to 720 and pretend like we don't know that it's 144 times 5. Maybe I look at that 720 and I think, hey, 720, that's like 72. That's like 12 times 6. Although this is 720, so this would be 12 times 60. And then... And I'll just keep this inside a single radical. Just keep breaking the 720 down, rewriting it as a product of factors. 12 is 3 times 4. And 60 is 6 times 10. And then let's see, we've got 4 is 2 times 2. 6 is 2 times 3. 10 is 2 times 5. At that point, it looks like all of my factors are prime. So here's the prime factorization. I'll rewrite it one more time and just list the factors in order so that I'm grouping together common factors. So I'll go with the smallest numbers first, twos. I have one, two, three, four, twos. So let's group those. One, two, three, four, twos. And then let's see, I have some threes. Here's one, two threes. So let's list those out. One, two. And then lastly, I have a five. Only one five. So there's my prime factorization of 720. Now, because this is a square root, I'm looking for perfect squares. A perfect square is something that can be written as a value times itself, two times. So really, if we see two of the same factor inside 
our radical sign, two factors on the inside will be able to come out as a single factor. Okay? Two times two represents two squared, and the square root of two squared is two. So if I can find a group of two of the same factor, I can take those and trade a group of two on the inside for one two on the outside. Now here's a group of three. I can trade a group of two threes for a single three on the outside. When it gets down to the five, the five, there's only one of them. I don't have another five. I can't make a group of two. I can't factor it any further. It was prime, right? So that five just has to stay inside the radical sign. Okay? Now, when I end up with multiple factors that are outside, we would finish the problem off just by multiplying those values back together. So 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 3 is 12. So my answer is 12 radical 5. Okay? Now the reason why, I'll just state one more thing before we go back to the next problem, the reason why I needed a group of two factors up here to get one factor on the outside is because this was a square root. How many factors you need in a group to get one factor on the outside has to do with your root. We call that the index. What type of root? When you see this radical sign at the original, at the start of the original problem, okay, when you don't see a number right in this spot, that's because it was a 2. But it's a square root. That index right there tells you how many of the same type you need. So we need a 2. So on the next problem, we're going to need a group of 3. So again, let's pretend like we don't know that 375 was divisible by 125. Um, let's just start fresh and try to factor it in general. So this is using a method of the looking at the prime factorization and then trying to find groups of the same factor. Now 375, it ends in 75, so that sounds like it's divisible by 25. And kind of like money, you know, how many quarters to make 375? It'd be 15 quarters, so it's really 25 times 15. And then 25 can be factored into 5 times 5, and 15 is 3 times 5, or 5 times 3, I'll list it, so my 5s are grouped together. And there it is, 5's prime and 3's prime. That's my prime factorization. So, I'm going to look for a group of 3 of the same factor this time, because I have a cube root. So, in order to get one factor to come outside the radical sign, I need 3 of the same. I need a perfect cube which is something times itself three times. And right there, I have a group of three of the same factor. So three factors of five will be able to be one factor of five on the outside of that cube root sign. And then the three, because I don't have enough to bring them out to make a group of three to come out, that three is just left behind on the inside. So I only got one factor outside, so I don't have anything else to multiply by. So that's really my final answer, 5 times the cube root of 3. All right, I hope that really helps you if you've been struggling to figure out how to break down these radicals. Now, let's take a look at a couple problems where we have variables. All right, the first one here, the square root of x to the 7th. It's a square root again, right? Here's how I would normally do it for myself. Because it's a square root, okay, I'm looking for groups of 2, right? And if you remember our exponent rule, let me just jot this down here real quick, x to the m times x to the n is equal to x to the m what? With n? Do you remember? It should be a plus m plus n. Okay, because of this rule right here, that when I'm multiplying powers on the same base, we add exponents. When I factor this x to the seventh, I need to look for exponents, numbers that will add to make seven, not multiply to make seven. Remember that? Okay, so let's start over here. I'll erase that, give myself some room. I'm going to break down that x to the seventh into as many groups of two as I can. So I'm really looking for a multiple of two. So that would be x to the sixth times x squared, or I'm sorry, x to the first. 
Okay, 6 plus 1 is 7. And if I multiply that back together, I get my x to the 7th. And x to the 6th, 6 is a multiple of 2. And so that's really groups of 2. That's actually 3 groups of 2, right? x to the 6th is x times x times x times x times x, if you wrote that out. So that would become, the square root of x to the 6th would become x to the 3rd. Okay, the little trick really is that this index here, I know this is a 2, a square root, that I'm dividing my power, the 6, by that index. So that exponent really needs to be a multiple of 2 in order for it to be a perfect square. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then I don't have enough over here to make another group of 2. I only have one factor of x, so that's just going to stay inside the radical. Now we have another little rule that says I need an absolute value sign around this x. Not to go into too much detail, but the bottom line is if you ever have an even root, which we did, we have an even root, a square root, of a variable, which I do, and the variable comes outside the radical with an odd exponent, then it needs to have an absolute value sign around it. So, maybe you can just remember a little acronym, EVO, E-V-O. And try to ask yourself anytime you see that you're taking a radical of a variable and just say, hey, was this an even root of a variable? And did it come out with an odd power? And if it did, put an absolute value sign around it. Okay. On to the next problem. All right, this time, with the cube root of x to the 8th, I'm looking for groups of 3, right? So I'm really looking for the biggest multiple of 3 within 8. And the biggest multiple of 3 within 8 is 6. So I would factor this to be an x to the 6th times an x squared. x to the 6th is how many groups of 3? 2. That's right. So really, I'd be able to take that outside the radical as an x times x or an x squared. Now this over here, x squared and the other radical, the other cube root, that's not enough to make a group of 3. So it's just going to stay on the inside. And my final answer there would be x squared times the cube root of x squared. Okay? Now, if it helps, you could break that down, give yourself one other look, and that would be really just to write out all those x factors. But normally I don't do that. I do it the way I just did and showed you. But just to give you another visual, x to the 8th was having x multiplied by itself 8 times, right? So what I really did up above is I had found out that within 8, 6 of those x's were going to help me make two groups of 3. So those two groups were each going to produce one x factor on the outside. That's where my x squared came from right here. And then the other two x's were not enough to make a group of 3 to get an x factor on the outside. So those two had to stay on the inside. And that's where that x squared came from as well. I hope that really helps. Good luck on all your math problems.